So hi everyone, um, my name is Dave Shepard, I work for Autodesk and I'm going to be going through the ISO 19650 workflow, um, which is really about these two documents here, but I'm going to do something slightly different today. My challenge is to cover that in 10 minutes flat. So okay, let's get started. So a little bit about myself. Um, you probably can see the video there that don't impress me much video I posted and got really lots of likes so thanks to everybody um, but in my role as lead construction consultant for Autodesk EMEA um, I work with a team of consultants who implement construction BIM solution uh, for some of Autodesk's largest customers uh, background in design technology and construction um, also volunteer BIM expert for EMI Uganda which is a an agency that um, does infrastructure projects in um, third world countries. Fun fact, I've convinced my wife to download my book on BIM to Kindle, which helps her to get to sleep. And my favorite saying is Proverbs 4, 7. It's not about information, it's about wisdom. Wisdom is a principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. A great saying from the good book. Okay, so let's get into the meat of this. Um, so the main thing to think about are the different parties that are involved in this process. You've got the lead appointed party, which is normally the lead designer in some cases, um, would be the architect's practice, or it could be engineering led, um, so that's the engineers, or it could be the main contractor. And then you have the task teams, which are feeding information into that lead appointed party, which has the contractual, the main contractual relationship with the appointing party. Now, the key part of the first stage of this process is that they do BIM execution planning. And a number of things they do there, there is obviously the BIM execution plan itself. There is the BIM protocol, which gives you the legal framework for sharing information and for controlling access to intellectual property. There is the responsibility matrix, which says who does what. And there's the task information delivery plan, which is required of all of the task teams who are feeding this information in, which gives a schedule saying what they will produce. Those are all rolled up together into a master information delivery plan, which gives the appointing party visibility of all the information that needs to be produced. And that needs to be in accordance with their level of information need, which includes the level of detail. Um, moving on swiftly with this, um, the next thing to notice is that the lead appointed party have the role of initiating and administering the common data environment. Now, one of the key aspects of this is that there is probably a project common data environment, which is being administered by the appointing party. And so there must be a connection between those two and that needs to be tested. It's through that environment that the reference information, um, including models, needs to be shared. The kind of data that we're talking about could be geotechnical reports, surveys, tender documentation, uh, proposed project schedule, method statements, work packages, requests for quotes, um, design models and drawings. These are the types of things that typically are shared at this stage through the common data environment. As we move forward into the task team's um, information management role, one of the aspects of that is to quality assure the reference data. And part of that process is to look at the exchange information requirements. So are there certain native um, formats that need to be followed like Revit and others? Um, is IFC required as an exchange information requirement? Um, XLS, PDF, um, open standards um, is a key part of the ISO 19650 um, specification. And of course, things like the maximum model size might need to be specified in order to ensure efficiency. There is something known as a standard method and procedure. And this is about checking on the assigned status that we give to information. So what about the suitability, S1, S2, and so on. And um, these are labels that we apply to information to ensure that its purpose is fully understood. Also, we need to be able to control revision and version. Version is something that is part of your internal change management process. Revision is how you share that information um, in sequences. And of course, there's a naming convention. This is something that's normally described inside of the National Annex. 
Remember that that information needs to be checked in connection with the level of information need, which, as I said, includes the level of detail. It needs to be spatially coordinated with the project coordinates so that we're not having to waste time trying to reposition the information that should be in the right place in the first place. And of course, it's important to use the specified model categories and classifications, um, which are specified, example being uniclass, uh, but there are others. These are some of the other things that you might want to check um, before you then link uh, or the task team links that information into their work in progress and on that basis uses it to update their work in progress. As we move on, the other thing to notice is the importance of reviewing the information model. So some of the things that might be a part of those reviews are specified in the bullet list there. So it could be for constructability, you might be doing some value engineering, or you might be doing a modularization study. The important thing is using this data, which includes the model, in order to produce or to derive this information, rather than producing these as um, separate items which have no connection um, to the model data. Um, the other important aspect is clash checks, which need to be conducted um, and also issue an RFI management so that you can then identify which are the major issues that need to be addressed um, and those can be escalated to the project uh, level and addressed by the lead appointed party. The task team themselves need to do an internal QA of that information before it's going to be distributed and shared back to the lead appointing party. The purpose of the lead appointing party is to bring together all that information, which we call the information model. This, of course, is federated and then to do a project wide QA and to do issue management and coordination review. So what they're looking for there are the usual QA checks, including clashes, but also how have you used the specified model categories to interpret the information that you're creating? So things like, in this case, you can see a brick coin. Um, this is normally measured as extra over the wall that's positioned in, but you do need the length and therefore it needs to be modeled so that you can extract the length data from it. And that's what I mean by categories and subcategories and classifications to do that. The same is the case, as you can see on the right hand side with this brick band, it needs a length um, dimension in order to extract the quantities appropriately. And again, the important thing here is to prioritize the escalated issues and then to meet virtually to review um, these coordination and prioritize issues. <coughs> we move on very quickly. to the, the role of the lead appointed party in terms of authorizing the information model or instructing teams to revise and resubmit. So this is a decision that's made by those parties based on having reviewed that information appropriately. And then the decision can be made to instruct the teams to revise and resubmit their data. The important thing to notice there is that there is a, an important QA process. Now, if that information is rejected, then of course it needs to go back to the parties um, and they will make the changes. And of course it then goes through this loop of the project wide QA, the issue management and coordination. But hopefully at the end of this, the purpose is to authorize the information model and then submit it to the appointing party. And that actually covers, with a minute to spare, ISO 19650 in less than 10 minutes. Thank you.